It is a lovely winter day here in Canada. Today's video, I wanna help you discover good documentary ideas. I wanna teach you the process that I use to find my films. And if you begin to learn this process, you'll realize that there is hundreds, if not thousands, of amazing documentary films all around you at any given time waiting to be made. And this process is the you and I approach, not you and I, not, not a urinary tract infection. It's uncertainty and intrigue. And I'm gonna talk about in this video how I've been using this approach to discover all my films in my film career and how you can use it to make your next film. So let's talk about that. In our last video I did and extensively in our Art of Documentary course, we always talk about where to find ideas, whether it's reaching out to journalists or looking on the news or setting up Google Alerts or reaching out to your own network of friends. But now I wanna help you with how to find those ideas, how to know if it's a good idea. So let's go back to when I was in film college and I had terrible hair. Without actually knowing these principles, this is what I was already applying to my documentary, my spidey sense in discovering films. And I created two films in college. One of them was Milking It and the other was Escarpment Surfers. And Escarpment Surfers actually went on to be part of TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. It was in the student showcase. And how I discovered that story idea was the idea of intrigue. You see, there was one day I was running up the escarpment in the middle of the night and I heard this whizzing sound. It wasn't even sure what it was. And then suddenly a bunch of longboarders came whipping past me with a truck behind them and high beams. I ran to the top of the escarpment, which is just a term for a small hill. And this truck came back up again with all these longboarders in it. I jumped out and asked them, what the heck are you doing? And they showed me their GPS they had attached to them and it said 100 kilometers per hour. Now, right there, I was intrigued. I began asking myself, why are these guys doing that? How crazy are they? Why do they send themselves at one in the morning? I used to run really late at night, it's kind of a weird thing. Why these guys would be throwing themselves down the escarpment at 100 kilometers per hour, being followed by a truck so that they could actually see the road. What would drive someone to do that? That's intrigue. If your story or the topic you're thinking about doesn't build personal intrigue, it's really important that you as the filmmaker are intrigued, then it might not be the right topic. Now the other thing is uncertainty. For milking at my film, my friend, when I was driving up in a car up north, we went and did some grocery shopping, we were all visiting our friends at a cottage, and I bought some milk. In Canada, we buy bags of milk. Here, take this loony, buy yourself a bag of milk. All right, love you, mom. We're sadistic. And she told me, she's like, why are you buying milk? Milk is really bad for you. I couldn't believe her at the time. I was obsessed with milk. I hadn't heard that dairy was bad for you. You might think that's crazy. This is 15 years ago. But most Canadians back then didn't have an IV bag. We had a milk bag being pumped into our veins. We knew milk made our bones strong. But this idea, when she told me this, this was uncertainty. Not only was it intrigued that I was like, I wanted to research that, but the uncertainty of, could this be true? What is the answer? Is milk actually bad for you? And right there, without understanding the documentary concept, which I'm always talking about in the art of documentary, which is adding tension to your films, I realized that I wanted to pursue this idea and that it would make an interesting film. Uncertainty is currency. Uncertainty will help build attention for your audience. You gotta imagine this, when people are watching your films, it's like a health bar in a video game is constantly depleting. No matter what, they're getting more distracted. You have to inject tension or uncertainty to keep filling up that attention span so people wanna finish this film and they'll feel like they were entertained and engaged and learned something. If you have an idea that people already know the answer to or that you're at least not intrigued into as a filmmaker, a question that you're trying to answer with your film. Is milk bad? Why do people throw themselves down a hill in the middle of the night? Are they psycho? Are they mentally deranged? Or are they just thrill seekers? These questions around your story of uncertainty and things that intrigue you will help inherently build tension into your film and will make it more engaging. So for you, when someone brings a topic, they say, hey, I have this neighbor and he's really good at biking and he's done this race every year. Well, that's not really uncertainty. That's something you know, he's finished this race every year. But maybe you could be a film if there was intrigue. You gotta ask yourself, am I intrigued about why he does this? And if you're not, if he just says, yeah, I'm a health nut and I like to doing uh, races every year and it helps my health, well, then that's not an exciting film. There's no tension there. There's no uncertainty. He's gonna finish the race and we know why he does it. He likes to stay healthy but maybe there's something deeper there. Maybe his dad got killed by the mafia in some kind of bike race and this is his way of finding retribution. 
That's intriguing. And now we have uncertainty. Can he find some sort of personal resolve through this bike riding? If you don't have uncertainty and intrigue built into your idea, it's going to be difficult to get an audience to care about this. In an art of documentary, we talk about this, the passion gauntlet. You need a character who's passionate about something. You as the filmmaker need to be passionate about the idea. And then in turn, you really need to ask yourself, is the audience going to be passionate about this? And if any one of those answers are no, then you probably need to abandon the idea. Below the earth. Eighth hour. Twelfth hour. More than 52 hours. If we could not remove the rock enough to get her out, she probably would not live. Usually the first idea you come up with is not going to be your best, and that's okay. Tell you this, Scarman Surfers and Milking It, those are not my best films, by far. But I shot them and completed them, and they built to the next film, and they are where I am today. It's how I've been able to create dozens and dozens of documentaries. These principles are how our team has been able to create an onslaught of film festival award-winning films. And if you're interested in this, if you're interested in taking that next step, I can't encourage you more than checking out The Art of Documentary. We've had over a thousand students come through our course, and not only are they getting to make their first film, sometimes it's their third or fourth film, they're getting into festivals, and for many of them, they're applying those principles to making more money. One of our students, Harry Knight, was just telling me how he's gone from making 600 pounds, which is like, I think, a thousand US dollars per job, now to making 6,000 pounds, way, way more on his jobs by applying these principles of storytelling so he can help his clients tell a better story that has more uncertainty and intrigue so they have a better, more engaged audience. And right now we're gonna be opening the doors back up for Art of Documentary, March 7th. So you wanna get in on that. We have two modules, over 100 videos. I get so excited about talking about Art of Documentary because I've seen it change so many people's lives and I love the community that we're building. So jump on that wait list. We have theartofdocumentary.com. You'll get group coaching calls every month. Be a part of a community where you can get feedback on your films. And plus two, each module, module one has 50 videos. Module two, we're adding more videos to that. It has over 50 videos as well. You're getting over 30 hours of teaching content. All of the deep dive knowledge we have from creating our films and running our film businesses is put into the art of documentary. And I'm actually, just after this video is done, I'm gonna be doing one exclusively for AOD students about launching your first YouTube channel. I'm gonna be adding that to module one. That video is gonna be getting into all the nitty gritty of actually how to make your channel successful, all the analytics, all that weird stuff. All that stuff that can be a bit overwhelming at first when you're launching a channel, but once you get into it, it can be simplified a lot more. Also too, I hope you like this new darker YouTube setup I have. It's actually really bright in this room, but I'm using my LUTs right now, which once applied, it's much different. And you can go check out those LUTs. They're 50% off right now. So go jump on our wait list. March 7th, we're reopening the doors. We'll have a special early bird rate for the Art of Documentary. And leave your questions below. This month, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of more videos leading up to our launch, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Always love getting to hang with you, even though you're not here in person. But if you're part of AOD, I actually get to hang out with you on our Zoom calls. But until then, I'll see you on the next one.